there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have four spicy reds in front of me, uh, two of them from a producer in the Longer Dock, two of them from Syrahs from the Southern Hemisphere, um, and uh, I'll just dig in. Uh, so the, the, the producer in the Longer Dock is called Domaine Castin. I'm not sure why they label their wines Savignus, uh, but uh, I'll give you a point to a website where you can find out all about them. Uh, first one I've got is um, uh, Carignan 2012 P. Debo. Give it a whirl. And um, I don't know if I'd ever put that as carrying them. There's, there's a softness and sweetness about it. It reminds me of, uh, uh, I think they still do jammy dodger biscuits. Um, it's not very, not particularly deep in colour. Uh, so it smells, it smells like it's going to be a, a, a light, uh, gentle red. Let's see whether it is. Yeah, I think of um, Carignan as being, um, sometimes it's um, on, on that dark fruit uh, character, so the black currants and blackberries, but here it's more the, the red fruit, it's things like uh, red cherries and, and raspberry. Uh, what it does have um, um, in terms of uh, southern French Carignan is, um, I, I didn't think it was going to have this tannic bite, but then they, I, I, I do get that. There's a chewiness about it. And there's a herbiness as well. Um, so it's authentically Southern French. Uh, I think that um, maybe I'd like to see it uh, with a little bit more flesh on its bones, but um, it's fair enough wine. Yeah, juicy and um, juicy but chewy. Let's see what the Grenache is like. So same producer, Domaine Castan, Savignus, Grenache 2012, Pays d'Hero. Now, what these have in common, um, to, something to do with the way in which they've been made. They've been made uh, in a very reductive way, so they've kept oxygen out of them as much as possible. Uh, in the um, in the Carignan, it was adding a little bit of uh, peppery freshness. Carignan is peppery anyway. Here, I get a little bit more of that slightly, ever so slightly stinky, rubbery character. So I'll be interested to uh, watch as the wine opens up whether that uh, actually disappears or is always is it's always going to be part of the wine at the moment. Oops, he said burping. Uh, at the moment, I'm really not sure uh, w which way it's going to go. Anyway, I'd better taste it. It's got that juicy, peppery, rounded softness and um, uh, berry, herb-scented fruit uh, of Grenache. Uh, but there's this, yeah, this little, uh, the, that, uh, that, that bit of the, the, the reduction. Um, uh, it's funny, I, I think a reduction sometimes adding freshness to wines. Here, it, it feels to be ever so slightly muting uh, the finish. And um, so I'm really not sure what I think about that wine. I'd almost want to get a little bit of the Carignan and uh, dollop it into uh, uh, into the Grenache just to um, uh, maybe add a little bit of uh, perkiness. Um, so, um, yeah, not sure there. I, if, um, if I change my opinion drastically, I will report back. Let's try wine number three. So, uh, as I said, uh, the final two are Syrah, uh, both from the Southern Hemisphere. The first one is uh, Vidal, Vidal, and never quite sure which one it is. Uh, there's a grape in, uh, that they use in Canada a lot, and uh, I think they call that Vidal, but I think this one's a Vidal. Um, anyway, it's their reserve series, uh, 2010 Gimlet Gravels Syrah. Well, I remember trying this winery, uh, the, not this Syrah, but they, they've got a regular bottling of a Syrah. I think it's got a white label. I uh, can't remember. In the, it was sometime in the, in the last six months. And um, they both have got similar aromas, but different aromas. The similarity is that um, Hawke's Bay Syrah uh, often has this uh, peppery, herbal character uh, that is really very attractive and uh, it's, uh, it reminds uh, a lot of people of uh, uh, Crow's Hermitage uh, from, from the Rome Valley. Uh, but what they, the, 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 uh, the regular bottling had, there was a touch of um, slightly sweet vanilla and I'm not quite sure whether, where that came from. Here I don't notice that, I notice more intensity of fruit, uh, I notice more, yes I think it's going to be more, more concentrated, uh, so there's the, 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 the plum, uh, the damson, the, uh, the, the blackberry, a bit of the blackcurrant in here. Uh, it, feels like, it feels like a more grown up wine, and it is a nice grown up wine. Um, there is, I, I get a touch of vanilla in there, but I think um, maybe it's the same oak regime and it's just that the, the wine is more concentrated, fuller, fleshier, and um, is able to, to, to cope with that, uh, uh, that little touch of vanilla. Um, uh, and in thinking about other, uh, a problem I have with some other Hawke's Bay wines is that they're all aroma and then when you come to taste them, uh, there's, it's like you say, well, it feels like the, the, people talk about a hole in a wine. There's like there's something missing or saying it's a bit hollow. But here it feels like there is a, 
it's pretty pretty complete. I maybe there, there, you, you can pick holes in, in, in stuff like this, but uh, I would rather say this is nice wine. I would like to dig into this with uh, uh, with a steak, not a pepper steak. It's funny when you, when people pick up that pepper in uh, in, in wines like this, uh, and you think, oh, it would be really nice to have that with pepper in the food. Often I find that if you have um, spice in the food, spice in the wine, they rather than uh, complementing each other, they they, they double, um, and uh, you you get something that is. Is, is almost too much of a good thing so I, I would leave the pepper in the wine and the pepper off the steak uh, but um, but I like that uh, it's one of the best wines I've tried for them for a long time um, the final wine uh, is Irasuri's Max Reserva Syrah 2011 from the Aconcagua Valley in Chile uh, let's give this a whirl now I never know with Irasuri's how, what is uh, the winemaking style what is the uh, terroir imprint? Because I, there's the, so many of the, the the wines I smell, and the, there is this uh, quite lush blackcurrant pastel character, uh, not as minty as, um, uh, as some other parts of Chile in, in that blackcurrant uh, pastel character, but um, it's it, 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 there is a very irasuris character here, um, and um, it, it's not that I find it um, a, a a negative, but it's more a comment on. Uh, a wine making imprint but then as you swirl it um, that character it's still there but it's like the wine grows up round it I haven't tasted it yet but I, I, I thought I'd go back and have another sniff because uh, it seemed like I was starting on a negative um, and there is uh, this Mediterranean olive uh, olive grove uh, plummy berry-ness uh, that, that's coming through and um, it's growing on me I might do some more sniffing and swirling before I taste it. Well, I did get around to tasting it, and um, it tastes pretty good actually. Um, there's a creaminess. If, I, I don't know whether it's uh, it's to do with um, aging on lees. It seems to have picked up a, almost like a mealy character. Uh, there is that pepper. There, there's the um, uh, the olive scent. Um, uh, there's the uh, the, there's the earthy fruit coming through, and, and it's, it feels warm but not too warm. There's a uh, the, 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 the structure there um, and um, I still would like to have seen what a, uh, a less um, technocratic don't know, a less technocratic winemaker would have done with those grapes because uh, I, I like the flavours there but it feels like they've been it's been slightly uh, over controlled in the way in which been, it, it, it's been produced um, so uh, but as I say it's growing on me and uh, uh, I'm going to try this wine with some people uh, uh, some wine people later on this evening and I'll be very interested to see both all, for, well, first of all their reaction and also whether it's come out of its shell uh, even more. Uh, as I say, that black currenty character that for me was the Erasmus imprint to start with, that has, uh, that, that are still there, but it's, it's, uh, it's like stayed the same level and the rest of the wine has grown round it. Much in the way that if you get so those South African wines where there's that little touch of, uh, uh, of, of baked burntness in there, uh, if it's a good wine, uh, the rest of the wine is in balance with it. If it's not so good, then it's too loud. Here, uh, I think that the wine is uh, is pretty good, and um, I'm not quite sure how good, but um, probably just uh, edging it for the uh, for the New Zealand uh, the, the 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 Vidal today. But. Um, be interesting to see how they get on later on a head-to-head -head, but uh, that's it for now folks I'll see you soon